Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and welcome back once again to Highway Hauling. Now, the Highway Hauling map is a new map by Remo, and of course, it will be linked in the description box below. And when I recently did a initial overview video about this map, a lot of you guys wanted to see more. Now, I've done a bunch of missions on this map with my buddy Diesel Addict since that video on one of our live streams, and the replay of that live stream is available on the channel to watch as well, because we got up to some really Really interesting stuff in that stream so if you want to see what led up in terms of progress from the first video to now I encourage you to check out that live stream if you would like to see what happened in between because we built multiple bridges got a bunch of tasks done and also well uh, some trucks exploded but that's a different story entirely now in this video, we are going to be taking care of repairing a tractor, but what I'm also going to be showing you guys is how much fun this map becomes once you actually get the infrastructure built and you get some of these bridges built and you can really utilize that road network in a role play style format. So the truck we're going to be using in this video is actually going to be our GMC Brigadier and the rig in the middle is Lime's F450 project, which is not done just yet. And then there's also the Blitzo truck, which is basically a flatbed four. OBS, which is recently available on consoles. Now, as you guys know, this map rewards a realistic roleplay style gameplay, and that's the line that we're going to be trying to find our way through, because I know that from time to time I tend to go a little over the level of realism, but once again, we're going to try to stay somewhat along the lines of realistic slash roleplay, and we're going to go ahead and jump into our GMC Brigadier 8000, fire it up, and we're going to go ahead and get this task activated. Now, fortunately, between the last episode and now, I actually ranked up a good bit on this playthrough, and in doing so, I was actually able to unlock some new suspension options for this truck, a new front drive axle option, uh, lockers. I've got a lot more stuff available now, and we've also gone up in tire size. So we're going to go ahead and get out on the road here and grab a trailer. Now, we don't need anything too crazy. We're running saddle low on this truck, so really all we're going to need to do is make our way out to the farm, and we'll get out there with our trailer, we'll activate the task, and then we will make our way to the parts shop, because I believe that that tractor needs service spare parts, because obviously there's uh, service spare parts, and there's also a different kind of spare parts. So, let's go ahead and turn around. We're back in, and we'll get ready to hook up this trailer. I wish it had a backup beeper. It would be a lot better with one. All right, let's see. What do we want to haul? I feel like the step deck semi-trailer would probably be a really good realistic thing to haul uh, with this truck. But there's also, of course, the wide flatbed, which we can't really use right now. And there's also the gooseneck as well, which is a little bit more vehicle focused. But I think for this particular task at hand, we're going to use the five unit step deck semi-trailer. Which, once again, another one of the good things about this map is that it makes these highway trailers a lot more of a viable option. So off we go. We'll get on our way. There should be... Yeah, there he is. I was going to say, there should be a beans on the dash. If there isn't a beans on the dash, we need to head back to the garage now. Like, right now. Alright, so the farm is going to be down to our right. And I'm going to go ahead and get stopped real quick. Like I said, a little bit more of a realistic play style, but I'm also going to try to not let my trailer go into the ditch. It's going to go up over the curb a little bit, but going to try to keep it out of the ditch if at all possible and I'm also going to try to stay out of all-wheel drive if at all possible. Now this particular truck in this setup with that trailer out on this map just looks so good to me. It just looks absolutely incredible in my opinion and also the amount of torque that you have with this truck is absolutely off the charts. You can go ahead and start off in first gear and just throw it into high and it has plenty of torque. It has more than enough to just go ahead and take off in high. Now let's see if we can keep ourselves from kind of sliding around a little bit. Once you start to pick up some speed, this pavement kind of turns into ice. So I'm gonna try to avoid that scenario as much as I possibly can. Let me just go ahead and check my GPS real quick and make sure that wasn't gonna be a faster way. Hmm. There we go, tractor troubles. Actually, that is a much faster way. I'm really glad I checked the GPS for that. Just make sure if there's anybody behind me. I don't want to back my trailer into them. Excuse me, birds. Now, sometimes 
using the all-wheel drive system to get up a hill, especially if you're on a more off-road focused tire, is actually kind of helpful. Uh, sometimes it will actually help you to throw on the all-wheel drive on pavement for like just a split second. Now let's see. Got a lot of houses and driveways out here. Now, if you guys didn't see on my recent live stream, there's also a campground on this map, which is totally usable for role play scenarios. There are a lot of different campsites and they are all, you know, they're, they're all able to be, you know, uh, to basically to be, you know, pulled into with a vehicle, which is so incredibly cool. Let's go ahead and check our GPS one more time. Make sure we don't need to make that right. All right, we just need to go ahead and head straight and then we will make a left once it gets onto the pavement. So throw it back into high and we're just cruising high. Now, with these off-road tires, I mean, in high, even in two-wheel drive, or I shouldn't say two-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive, since there's two axles back there, and two sets of dualies equaling out to eight wheels just in the back. Either way, uh, even with just the power going to the rear, this thing does great on these back roads. Do not take that. That is not the direction we're trying to go. Oh, look at that. You can even see the gear selector down there. That's so freaking cool. I love this truck, and honestly, this truck lends itself very well to being driven in interior view, too. So let's go ahead and go to exterior view for just a little bit now. Making our way through here, still trying to stay for the majority of the time to the right side of the road, you know, just in case there was the chance of something coming the other way. Also, would there be any way for us to... Ooh. I wonder... Dude, I am very curious, actually, because we might be able to make our way... You know what? You know what? It'll be a little bit easier to disconnect the trailer and... See, look at that! I just barely took off and then threw it in high and it picked up no problem at all. Great torque out of this truck. It's a really nice farm as well. Looks like a buildable, uh, buildable shed out there, too. That's really cool. Ooh! Alright, we got a side entrance. This might be actually the best option. So I'm going to pull my trailer kind of off to the side of the road. Not too much off to the side of the road, but just enough to where it's not going to be in anybody's way. Let's back it up. We'll point it back to the edge of the road by just a little bit. That should be just far enough. I want it to be in a spot where we can reattach it with, you know, fairly, uh, fairly low degrees of issue. So, yeah, that's plenty off the road. All right, so let's head out into this field and we'll find the tractor and we'll also get the task nice and activated. I love this little pasture, too. This is really, really cool. Really cool. Oh, my God. My horn is apparently able to make fences disappear. Yikes. Yo, oh my god. Yo, that tractor actually broke down like halfway through plowing this field. Oh jeez, let's not let him get stuck doing that. Alright, show task. Lucky, you rolled by just in time. I got too much to do, but I need a new tire for the tractor. You got some time to spare? Grab one extra too while you're there. Details, we need two crates of service spare parts from the parts shop and we need to deliver we need to deliver them back here to this tractor so we will definitely go ahead and handle that for you right now buddy go ahead and whoop actually get it accepted show task accept and start tracking let's go got that unloading zone right there next to the tractor we'll be able to knock this out in no time at all and i know that our trailer is a little bit over the top and it's a little bit um just a little bit like overdoing it maybe for a task like this but really this map encourages you to use those highway trucks and highway trailers even though this is not fully in highway spec i, I have to drive this thing off-road from time to time but overall it's still definitely a really good highway truck and it lends itself very well to this map and you can really tell that this map was designed around trucks like this let's go ahead and get backed up easy Nice and easy. There we go. Break on. And get it attached. Wow, that was basically perfect. That was basically perfect. All right, let's go in and check the GPS and plan out a route. So what we need to do is we need to get to the parts shop. So really what we need to do is we need to turn around. We need to head back this way. And let's see. 
So I'm going to say turn here, turn here, and then we'll go down the bridge. We'll mark that turn as well, and we'll mark that as well. All right, so that will get me to the parts shop pretty dang easily. And now, all we gotta do is turn this setup around, which is gonna be a very interesting task. I'll definitely say that. So let's pull in here just a little bit. And I need to get my trailer straightened out. All right, back up the other way. This might work. I'm crossing my fingers and hoping for the, well, maybe not. I was going to say, I was crossing my fingers and hoping for the best that I wasn't going to have a Hammond moment. Nice and easy. Alright, there you go. Back. I'm going to go all-wheel drive and diff lock on just to be safe. My trailer is going to dip off the edge just a tiny little bit, but that's alright. And there you go. Not bad goes to show that even I want, like, even I can do a task properly if I'm doing it, like, <laughs> if I'm doing it, like, calmly enough and relaxed enough, even I can do a task properly in this game. Easy does it. And now, is just a nice cruise up there to the parts shop. You know, I really do have to say, though, this map continues to impress me. Every single time I play it, there's there has never been a time where I've been on this map that I haven't had a blast. And I think that goes to show, once again, not only the dedication of Remo in terms of his map development, but it also goes to show, like, how much time went into this map before it launched, and how much time went into making it what it is today, and how much time went into making sure that the player had a great experience. Because at the end of the day, that's what you want out of a map like this. And especially if you're coming at it from a realism-based perspective or a roleplay-based perspective, my god, you cannot get much better than this. You really cannot. All right, let's see. Am I making a... I don't think I'm making a left here. Yes, I am. It's just a little bit further up than I would have liked. All right. Go and get that out of the way. Did I swing wide enough? Heck yeah, I did. I didn't even take out the stop sign. Boy, we're going to send it now. And I'm trying to keep myself on the road and out of the ditch. Yeah, being out of the ditch is definitely, definitely my preference on this map. Definitely my preference. Sun is starting to go down, but that's all good. No worries about that. Easy does it. Now right, we're going ahead and making a right right here. I'm going to swing wide. I'm going to try not to take out that stop sign. My question is, do I swing wide enough? Ooh, just wide enough. Yo, I'm actually starting to get pretty well accustomed to the length of this trailer and the turning radius of this truck. So I'm, I'm actually pretty pretty pleased with how, uh, how close I've gotten to that. Oh, jeez. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, she started drifting on me. Let's be easy with that. Camp and port this way. Swing it wide one more time. Yeah, that was plenty wide enough. Once again, that stop sign lives to see another day. Gorgeous river as well, by the way. And realistic looking river as well. Like, because this river has, you know, obviously the realistic rocks in it and stuff like that, but it's also got, you know, some approaches that are really sharp and other approaches that are fairly, like, you know, fairly simple. I mean, it's got these little sandbars and stuff on the side. Really nice, like, aesthetic choices going into play here. That, there goes the trailer passing me again. That's just something that happens uh, when you're going down these roads at a, at a slightly higher pace. That trailer starts to get a little iffy about it. Whoa! And you would think that it would be... You know, that you would think there would be a little bit of a difference between having the trailer loaded and unloaded, but not even so much. Like, it really doesn't seem to care whether it's unloaded or not, and, you know, whenever it starts to actually pass you like that. Well, boys, as we pull into the parts shop area, night has begun to fall, and it is a gorgeous evening out here. An absolutely, absolutely beautiful evening. Now, 
the first thing that I want to do before we load up is I want to turn around because that is going to make getting out of here a whole heck of a lot easier. Now, as far as that damage on the front, uh, the front and rear of the truck goes, don't even worry about it. I'm just acting like it isn't there. And uh, I'm not going to worry about it if y'all aren't going to worry about it. So let's get this thing backed up and get ready to load it up. Here we go. Oh, boy. Trying to get you correctly positioned the first time. Oh, that was a little overzealous, wasn't it? That was really overzealous, actually. Oof. All right, there you go. Oh, God. That front end swung around a little quicker than I thought it was going to. Jeez. And here we are. Not bad. All right. So, service spare parts. Boom. Boom. Now, this trailer should be able to handle those service spare parts easy as, like, literally easy as anything. So, we'll go ahead and get on out of here. And really, it's only two units, so it is super over the top for this particular task, but I figured I would go ahead and give this truck this setup early on because I feel like we're going to need it in the, in the future. I mean, I feel like this setup will be a really, really, really good setup later on down the road. Now, let's go ahead and make our way through here. Easy does it. Fun fact, when Remo decides to expand this region, that down there will be one of the tunnels leading to another region. So I'm really excited to see what he does with that in the future. Now back out onto the main road, we're gonna head back down this mountain and get back out onto the main road and make a run back to the farm. I'm gonna try to make good time doing this, but I'm also gonna try to not be like, you know, super overzealous or crazy. So I'm gonna try to find a happy medium, a nice balance. And if we can do that, we should be all right. Nice, smooth input inputs. Now, let me know in the comment section down below what some of your favorite tasks on this map have been so far, if it's a map that you've been playing, because I've really, really been enjoying it. And not only about have I been enjoying the tasks, but I've also really been enjoying the contracts as well. The contracts have been lots of fun, and they've been really, really well integrated into the environment as well. Because you really do feel like you're, oh my god, slow down, slow down, slow down, holy crap! Wow! Alright, back to realistic roleplay. We picked up way more speed going down that hill than I ever thought we were going to pick up. And the brakes weren't doing a thing. The brakes literally weren't doing anything. And I was like, it's all I can do to just prevent myself from going off the side of the mountain now. Okay, like, let's just try to not completely obliterate ourselves right off the start in terms of getting our cargo back. But anyways, moving on. Like I said, let me know in the comments down below what some of your favorite tasks or contracts on this map have been so far. I know for a fact some of mine were actually the bridge building contracts, and I know that that might seem a little weird because in SnowRunner, bridge building is definitely a more, you almost might consider it like a, uh, almost not even like a boring task, but just something that you're going to have to do on every map you go on anyway, so some people might get tired of bridge building very quickly, but this map, for whatever reason, has a knack for making even bridge building really fun and really enjoyable. Let's go and pull up right here. Nobody coming. There's another tunnel down there. God, there's so many tunnels on this map. I cannot wait for this region to be fully realized when Remo starts releasing other maps into this region. It is going to be wild in terms of playability. Like, the amount of content on offer here is literally going to be on par with something you might see from the freaking devs. Oh, God. Keep it on your side of the road and don't let the trailer pass you. Wait a minute. Okay, yeah, no, never mind. I'm going the right way. Okay, I'm going the right way. I just need to go ahead and place a marker there. And there. And there. And that should be... Yeah, I'll be able to... I'll be able to tell not to turn at any other, uh, at any other stops other than those. Those seem uh, like they would be obvious enough. Now, one of the other things about Highway Holland is the fact that, yes, the main highways were one of the biggest parts and one of the biggest elements of this map, but also the back roads are really well designed too. And funny enough, I know you guys know, especially those of you that watch my streams, know that I'm not the biggest fan of playing SnowRunner at night. And this map is one of the few maps that actually makes me really enjoy night gameplay. And that says a lot because neither Diesel Addict or I is is all that big of a fan 
of, or are all that big of, of fans in general of night gameplay and SnowRunner, but this map makes it genuinely enjoyable and makes me not want to switch time. And that is huge for me. And those of you that have been watching me for a while know how incredibly huge that is because Nighttime in SnowRunner is really, really good, but on a lot of the maps, like the mud maps and the trail riding maps, it's not always what I want to do. It's not always the type of gameplay I want to, uh, you know, like, basically, it doesn't highlight the vehicles, in my opinion, in the best way. Now, granted, there are some vehicles that look amazing at night, like, for example, Lime's Work in Progress 2017 F450, but a lot of vehicles, I feel like, aren't really all that well highlighted by nighttime, and this map does a great job of not only highlighting the vehicles, but the map itself at nighttime as well. Oh, just hauling through here. Hey! Dude, my horn is so ridiculous. It knocks over mailboxes. I'll take that any day of the week. Not stopping for this one. It's middle of the night, bro. I'm just, I'm just gonna send it through. Yeah, I'm gonna send it through. I got all-wheel drive on. I really don't even need all-wheel drive on. I don't even know why I have it on. Now, with a fully loaded trailer, though, going up a hill like this, I would want my all-wheel drive on because this truck will actually sometimes torque up just enough to lift that front axle off the ground, which is ridiculous for a vanilla truck, but still. Not too bad. It's funny because my grip on dirt is way better than my grip on pavement. And I'm like, I don't even have to worry about sliding when I'm on dirt. Like, on dirt, I'm good to go. I'll just flat out send it in 7th and 8th gear. Okay, let's go ahead and check. And this is not where I'm going to enter. I'm actually going to enter a little bit further up the road. And the farmer is probably asleep right now. But we're just going to... We're just going to fix this tractor in the middle of the night. It's going to be fine. Don't worry about it. It's going to be all good. All good. Don't worry about it. My only thing that I'm concerned about is whether or not his dog starts barking at us and wakes us or wakes him up. We're already awake, but, you know, I just don't want his dog to bark and wake him up. Ooh, oh, I didn't quite have the torque to maintain high for that. Yeah, I didn't bring my trailer in here before, but that's why I wanted to make sure I turned really wide on that entrance because if I hadn't, I would not have been able to bring my trailer in here. No way. No freaking way would I have been able to do that. All right. Not bad at all. Let's go ahead and get these spare parts dropped off. And boom. Boom. Good to go. Right on. I really appreciate that. Anytime you need fresh produce, stop by. Sounds good, my dude. I really appreciate it. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video on the Highway Holland map, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you guys next time.